Hello everyone and welcome to the channel. I'm Emmanuel, I'm a Boeing 737 pilot and a member of PMDG's tech team. So, one of the probably most asked questions in the recent days is what do my joystick sensitivity settings look like? And the honest answer for that is probably going to surprise you a little bit because here they are. You can see except for a small dead zone of 4% I've simply done no changes to it. And in this video I'm going to explain you why that is and what you can do to your own joystick in order to match it the best for the PMDG 737. Now, why did I not do any changes to the sensitivity at all then? Well, the reason for that is rather simple. And that is that the developers usually develop their aircraft to be flown at no changes, so at zero differences from the um, normal sensitivity. And the flight model has to be based on that. Now, of course, developers can only average the hardware that the simmers are going to use. And for sure, if you are using a joystick, then that is always going to be different from somebody using a yoke. And not even two yokes of uh, different brands are going to be similar. So, in my case, I'm using the Thrustmaster Boeing yoke, and that one is actually doing a pretty good job with the PMDG 737. So, of course, partially that is because I've been very actively involved in telling the developers what it should look like. So, the flight model overall is based to a certain extent on my personal demands, and those are, of course, influenced by the hardware that I personally am using. So it is already a very well-balanced flight model for the hardware that I have, namely for the Thrustmaster Boeing yoke. Of course, there could be um, a little bit more fine-tuning done, but overall, it is working pretty fine with what I got. Now, let me give you some hints as to how to tune your hardware for the PMDG 737 then. For the aileron axis, if you have an aileron available on your hardware that moves 90 degrees to the left and to the right, so for example the Boeing yoke or the Honeycomb yoke, then you should aim to match your hardware with the control column in the virtual cockpit so that your hardware movement corresponds or matches the movement of the control column in the virtual cockpit because ultimately that is what the flight model is tuned to. If you have a certain deflection of the control column in the virtual cockpit, then that deflection in real life should give you the same reaction of the aircraft than you would get in real life. Now, for the elevator, things may be a little bit different. And the reason for that is that in the real aircraft, the control column can be moved forward and backward quite a bit more than any flight simulation hardware that is not a dedicated 737 yoke can actually move. So I don't know the exact distance by heart that the 737 yoke can travel, but it surely is anywhere in the region of 30 or 40 centimeters to the uh, front and to the back. While, for example, the Thrustmaster Boeing yoke can only give you something like 17 centimeters, I believe. So maybe half as much. So when you are tuning the elevator axis, there is basically one thing that you want to be very sure of, and that is accuracy in setting the aircraft's pitch attitude. So the real airplane can be set perfectly fine to within half a degree of pitch, probably even less if you really want to be that precise. And the way you do it in the real airplane is that usually you just barely move the control column forward or backward so that you get a reaction out of the airplane. So when you are setting your sensitivity settings, you have to be very sure that a very small movement of your hardware is only going to give you a very small and precise movement of your airplane. Now, when you have achieved that, be sure that increasing your sensitivity or increasing the pulling on your control column is only going to give you 
a slightly stronger getting curve. So that means that at all times in flight you have to be able to control the airplane accurately. The best test in my opinion, and that is a very personal opinion, how you can do that is take your airplane, first of all go into straight and level flight, and then configure your elevator axis so that you're able to set your rate of descent precisely. In the real airplane I tend to say we can set it within about 100 feet a minute and if there is no turbulence within 50 feet a minute but that is very rare so if you're able to set it within 100 feet a minute that is basically what you need in order to be able to follow the glide slope of the ILS all the way down to the minimum. In real life maintaining the glide slope to 50 feet above the runway threshold is not a problem at all. That's how precise you can steer the real airplane. And you should set your axis so that you're able to do the same thing. Now, the next test you should do then is how strong do you need to pull on your control column in order to maintain the altitude when you increase your G-loading or when you increase your angle of bank. Of course, you need to be able to control it to 30 degrees but I would go a little bit further and roll it to 45 degrees and then calibrate your elevator axis so that at 45 degrees angle of bank you are still able to precisely hold your altitude without deviating up or down. Now, when you can do both of those, first controlling the pitch very precisely in the zero feet per minute range and then control it very precisely in the range all the way up to 45 degrees angle of bank then you have achieved what you're looking for. Now, of course, that is going to be very different on every type of hardware that you have. For example, if I try to use my Thrustmaster Warthog Hotas, and I have to admit, I did that a couple of times in the recent days because it was just such a nice feeling to get that yoke away from in front of me. I'm just really missing that table from the Airbus. Anyway, so... When I tried to fly the 737 on my uh, Thrustmaster Warthog Hotas, it was a totally different feeling and I would have to do so much calibration in order to get it right that, in my opinion, it was just worth it to uh, plug my yoke back in. Anyway, you probably won't have the choice between so many different pieces of hardware, so just go with what you have, be sure to calibrate it accordingly, and that is all you really need to do. Be able to control it precisely with the elevator that you can seat your vertical speed within 100 feet a minute. And as said, that only requires very, very small movements on the control column. Don't try to yank it all over like you see a couple of people do in YouTube videos, both in flight simulators as well as in real aircraft. There is a big difference why you see that happening in real life on some videos versus flight simulators. And that is in real life. There are so many more and so many different kinds of turbulences on final approach. You have updrafts, downdrafts, then you have the terrain influencing the wind, especially the trees around the airports. And the behavior of real aircraft in turbulence is just a bit different from flight simulator. That's why in real life it can sometimes be necessary to do those large movements on the control column in order to control your airplane precisely. Now, in Flight Simulator, simply no weather conditions exist that would require such a large input on the controls. I've personally already talked to a couple guys at Asobo, really asking them to implement something like that. But the only answer I've gotten was, well, we can do that, but then 95% of the customers are no longer going to be able to land an airplane in the sim. And I can sort of understand how they get to it, because it takes quite a bit of practice in real life. And I have to tell you, I just have to tell you, in real life it's not as easy to land a plane as it is in Microsoft Flight Simulator. That doesn't just account for the 737, it's also for pretty much all other types that I've flown in real life that also have a representation available in Flight Simulator. Therefore, let's recap. For the aileron axis, you basically want to match the hardware piece that you have with the aileron available that you have in your virtual cockpit. In any case, if you have a piece of hardware that cannot be matched 100%,
then you want to be sure that you are going to match your piece of hardware, that you can control the angle of bank precisely in the normal flight envelope and about until 45 degrees angle of bank. What happens beyond 45 degrees, in my opinion, is not worth it um, bothering with too much because that is just not the range in which you will be flying the 737. Then up the elevator axis. As said, you have to have very good pitch control and you should be able to have that good pitch control when you're in a straight and level flight and then without the aid of elevator trim when you're banking to 45 degrees and still you have to be able to maintain your altitude accurately. All right. I hope this answers a lot of the questions that many of you guys have asked me on the term of uh, joystick calibration and joystick sensitivity settings that I'm using. If you found this video useful, I would be very glad if you could leave a comment and maybe consider subscribing to the channel. And if you really love my videos, I would be very happy about a small donation through the Buy Me A Coffee link in the video description below. Until then, I'm looking forward to see you all again on the next time. And wishing you all a great morning, afternoon, evening, night, whatever it is when you're watching this.